Hey everybody, welcome. It's Chris Petrie. We're back, Extreme Beginners. We're doing our drawing sessions here. We're just going to keep doing these drawings, uh, you know, every week, week after week, month after month, and year after year. We're going to stick to it. Um, we're going to try all kinds of different subject matter when we're drawing, right? So uh, stick with me here. Uh, I always mention too, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. You know, this way you can, uh, you'll get my videos every week. You'll see those uh, coming in on a weekly basis. So you can watch along. Maybe you can watch along on those great watercolor videos. You know, maybe if you don't want to tackle every video with the watercolors, you, you, maybe you do the ones you feel comfortable with, the ones that are maybe a little easier. Um, I don't always do very, very difficult um, compositions when I'm doing my paintings online on YouTube. Sometimes I'll do uh, more uh, simple type paintings. You know, I try to give myself a break once in a while. And um, same thing with the drawings here. We're going to do some more intricate drawings and then we'll do some simple exercises and compositions like we're going to do right now. And let's get started. So I just figured I would do an interesting uh, candle. I'm going to do this glass candle. It's a jar. It's got a small metal cap, uh, handle, I should say. I'm going to set it right across from me. And I'm going to set it up so that it's in uh, two dimensions. So I'm not going to draw this three dimensionally. I'm going to draw it two dimensionally so that there's no, no difficult angles. You'll just see the, the straight jar like it is right here. So I'm not going to do it where you're seeing the top of the jar or the bottom of the jar or anything like that. It'll be just straight two dimensions like that. And we'll have a fun time. I'll move this like that. I'll center that handle, the black handle. Okay, so I'm sitting that across from me. You can also look up some candles online, maybe some pictures. You can have your phone next to you. You can work from your phone or your computer. You can take your computer. That's what's, what's great about drawing is, hey, you can, you can take your phone and pick pictures from that. You can take stuff around the house, set it down on the table, draw from that. You can draw from your computer, your desktop computer. Um, you can look outdoors. You can go outdoors and draw. So basically, it's unlimited. As long as you have your pencil and your paper, you're all set. You can draw anything. So, and that just keeps you motivated and excited because you know you have endless amounts of information you can draw. And as we go, you know, I like to use these. These are the Strathmore um, sketchbooks. So I use these a lot. They're a 5 inch by 8 inch, 5.5 inch by 8.5 inch is the sheet size. I can zoom out a little bit. So that's, uh, I, just, I just keep filling them all up with drawings. You know, just that once you get done with one of these, you get another one, you start filling that one up. If you don't want to buy an expensive, um, you know, bound uh, sketchbook, that's not a problem. I use printer paper all the time, too, to save on money. So you can use printer paper as well. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Okay, I think we're good. We're going to zoom in a little bit, like so. And we'll start out. The first thing we're going to do is just look and say, you know, it is a pretty basic shape. It's sort of a cylinder, really. And uh, the top is a little larger on top. So you could do a preliminary sketch. That's always a good way to go. You start out, a preliminary sketch is nothing more than a very, very super light, very extremely light pencil line of your object that only you can really see. So you're not looking to make it any darker than you have to, just, just as light as possible so that just you can see it. And then once you start drawing, you don't have to really erase it because it's not really that much of a big deal if you leave that line on there. So here I'm going to do the top of the jar. There's a lid. So you might not see that, but that's okay. And then we're going to say the jar is like a cylinder, but it is tapered out a little bit. It's not straight. So if you can imagine, the jar does flare out like this a little bit on each side, 
like this. So you're going to want to capture that. So you just flare it out a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. And then we go across like this straight. And I'm doing a preliminary sketch now, super light. And then I want to I want to match this angle like this. I want to match that over here. So I'm just careful to look over here, keep looking over there and say, okay, how much is that angle on this drawer? It's just a little bit. So I try one line like this, super light. And if it looks good, then I know I'm all right. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna leave it that way. If Maybe if you have to, if you're doing a super light, you can just make another line over the next to it to get it a little bit wider if you have to at the bottom. Does that make sense? So if you're doing a super light, barely visible pencil line, you don't have to worry. You can do that light preliminary sketch first, preliminary drawing, and then you're gonna go over with the darker lines. So, same thing with the handle. The handle, there's a, a black ring around the jar here. Now I'm going to start going darker because I've got the feel for the jar. I can see that I, I've captured the right angles here and here. I've got the top nice and level across the top and the bottom is level too. Nice and level across like that. So now that I have that feel for this, now I can go in and start drawing those darker lines because I kind of have everything really laid out now. Does that make sense to everybody? If you do that super light sketch first, then you just, then you go and do your darker lines. And then here, again, I'm gonna do a super light, very, very, very faint light line for these handles because these handles are difficult. These are gonna give you guys a little bit of the, you know, you're going to be like, oh, you know, I w I'm not going to draw the handles, but just give them a try anyway. They come out, they go like this, then they flare out this way. And then you just have to remember, where is the handle on this jar, the bottom of the handle? About here, almost to the very bottom. It's a little bit up from the bottom. So then you can even take your jar and say, okay, where's the halfway point of the jar? about here, then you can say, okay, I noticed that this is kind of like a U. So you do that, you like a horseshoe, a U like this. And that is your first start of your handle down on this bottom section over here. Does that, can you see that? So instead of getting all like trying to just start in one place and go around and it winds up not looking properly centered, all you have to do is just get your marks like we do in, you know, and this is another reason I always say try, try, does this make sense? Try to watch those watercolor videos, videos I do every week because I cover um, all these things that we're doing now, these little steps to doing hash marks and laying out your drawings and your, your sketches. Is it, can you see how I'm doing that? So if you're seeing that on the videos, on the watercolor videos, you're going to be more likely to remember it when you're drawing now. So if you're not watching my watercolor videos, you're, you might not remember that you're going to start to do some hash marks around your drawing to get things properly located. So again, I always try to give a little, you know, um, I give a little promotion to my videos, my watercolor videos, but please watch my water, you know, watercolor videos too. You're really going to get a lot out of them. I promise you that. Your, your drawings and paintings will get better. So. Again, like we said, we got the center of the jar like this. And that's how we got the center of this handle like this. And I'll take the jar and just show you again in case you're going to... You see how that... This here is in the center of the jar. The very center of the jar like that. So instead of fighting life and just trying to make wing it and start drawing this all the way around, who knows where this is going to end up? right? But if you take your time and say, let me just get some hash marks and lay things out a little bit, that's going to be much easier. And I promise you, your drawing will go much better if you're doing these little bit of take a moment out and do a couple hash marks and, and things. So we, we, what we did is we got the center of the jar like this, and we made a hash mark on that center point. And we said that that bottom of the jar, or the bottom of the handle, we're trying to do our handle now, the bottom of the handle is a little bit up from the bottom of the jar, not that much. Maybe a quarter of the way up, quarter, 
half, three quarters, top of jar. So that's how we, we get this. We say, okay, it's about a quarter of the way up. We get the center mark, that's the center of that, it's like a U shape, that handle there where it dips in like that. And that's all we had to worry about. Then we might say, all right, let's, as we go this way and we flare out this way, again, instead of just doing it without maybe doing a couple little hash marks, let's get some, let's think about it a second. Wait a minute, we want to make this even, just like this is even, right? We want to get this pretty accurate. So all we have to do is just figure out how much we're going to make one side out and then coming back in again, what we're going to do, we're going to make the same mark over here so that we go out the same amount of space on each side of the jar. So the way we do that is we look at the jar first and go, okay, I see about where that is. So let's say it's about, and well, we can even do this. We can say, we'll use our pen, our, our pencil, our mechanical pencil as a, as, a, as a measuring tool. And we'll say, all right, from the tip of the eraser to the top of this plastic on this pencil, that's gonna be how far the handle goes out before it starts turning up toward the top. So then I take that and I say, all right, let me put my finger there and just make my fingernail right where that line has to be. Then I make that line like so. Then I go over here and do the same thing. I say, okay, where is this over here? And I take this like this and that, the end of that eraser is my fingernail my pointer finger in, in, fingernail is right there. I make my mark. Now I've got both marks on both sides of where my handle goes out and then starts to curve back in again. So that's all we had to do. See that? And that's how easy it works. And then you just do a little bit of a, you know, a flare there. It almost looks like a, um, oh, it almost looks like, I would say that kind of looks like a, like a bowling pin. All right, so I, I consider that something that looks similar to a bowling pin. So I'm going out and then I'm turning up and I'm going up and then I'm gonna look over here and go, all right, how am I gonna do this? Let me go over here maybe and do like we did over here, out and then in. And you can even go that way and do it like that. All right, now it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. So that's how we want to do this. Then we go in and we do our double line. And that's just a matter of, can you see that? We're just doing the double line. You're just drawing carefully, keeping your pencil the same distance away from the line all the way through. Carefully do it. And my hand's resting all the time on my paper. So whenever I'm drawing, my hand is resting down and I'm just moving my pencil like this. So my hand is always anchored to the paper. I'm on the table now, so now I'm on my work table, but I'm still, my hand's on the table. I'm not like out flailing around like this with my hand in the air. You have to have your hand resting on the table or on your pad of paper, on your table, your work uh, table, whatever you're doing. And then you just keep doing that and you just follow it all the way around and you keep doing the same thing. Have your hand anchored down and then just move your fingers and your hand around as you go like that and you can go with your darker line that's all we're doing now now we're just going to go with the darker line over that really light line we had like that looks good then we're going to do the top of the jar we could cut we can shade this in this is that black ring or that holds the handle to the top of the jar and then we could we could also put in our shading for our our pencil line for the uh, handle so we go right around like this carefully again your hands always anchored to the table or the pad of paper that you're working on and that gives you that nice accurate line that you can do and these are little things you learn as you go are you all learning I guess I know you are, I know you're having fun. One thing after another, you just keep going. You don't think about it, you're just doing it. And then here we have the top of the jar, the lid of the jar, and we just go across the top, and like that. And there we have it. And then if we want, we can do our oval 
This is an oval. That's the, the a sticker on the jar. It's an oval. And then we can just do a little fancy scribble that looks like script, but it's a scribble. And then some more little, just little whimsical lines. You just, you're, you're kind of just, just dancing the pencil around on the paper to make it look like there's writing on there. And, and, but actually there is none. We're just making it up. That's because it's too small to, there's not enough, the scale of this, if you did this in a, on a really super large piece of paper, then maybe you can draw in the, 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 the letters and everything. But for this, it's a small composition, so we don't have to get involved with that detail. And we just do it this way, like that. And then there is a little bit of wax in here, so we'll put some wax in the bottom. It goes across here, maybe we'll even go up a little higher, like the wax is there. And maybe we'll put a little bit of a, a wick in there too, that we can see. Maybe we'll erase that a little bit, just to give it a little mystery to it, like that. So that's the wick there. And there is a little bit of smoke and smoke and like that, that little bit of um, soot. You can add some shading, some soot on the top of the jar. On the inside of the jar, there's some soot and things. So that's fine. You can add that in, a little bit of that. I'm just going to do a little bit of it. You can do it darker if you want. But I hope you've had fun with this. You can do this, you practice it two or three times and just be real careful with things. Um, I would say um, a, a table would be good. A little, just the bottom of the table here across. And also what you can do is maybe, um, if you're gonna draw this, you know, you, you stop and pause the video as you go and maybe you take a few notes um, so that you can use those for further reference. Because if you've done this one time and you've taken notes too, and maybe you make some notes on your paper when you're drawing this like this, and maybe you take some notes and say, you know, um, oh, you might just put down like this is like a candle. And, um, you know, you might put down um, candle with layout hash marks. And then you can put some pencil lines down to the hash marks like that. Like we did, we had the hash marks here. Maybe a couple other notes that you might think you need, but if you try this two, you know, two or three times, you'll get the feel for it. And you'll absolutely be able to create this jar with no problem. So this is basically about just going through the, the um, steps as you go from starting with a super light sketch to get the feel for it, the size, the dimensions, the angles. And once you have that, then you can go over with your darker lines and then you get the full um, drawing just the way you want it. And uh, you can also, you know, frame this. You can go over it with ink if you want, with black pen, or you can do a couple in, in pencil and then do one with black pen and then you can frame it if it comes out really good. So this is something if you're really into the, uh, look at this and you like this one a lot, whatever drawings we might be doing here together, if you like one in particular that you really get excited and jazzed about, that's the one you might want to work on a few different times, maybe two or three different times, and then maybe do like one in pen and do it really nice in pen, maybe draw it really super light in pencil first, then go over with pen or even some ink with a bamboo pen and some ink, and then you can frame that, and then you have yourself a nice bit of artwork for yourself, or you can give it as a gift, or um, uh, put it up on your own wall in your studio or in your home, and you have an exciting bit of work that you've done that you've accomplished over the first three or four months as you're doing your uh, Extreme Beginners series here, where we're doing drawings and we're doing paintings as well, so we're gonna do more paintings as well too, going forward. Hope you had a great time. Again, uh, please subscribe if you haven't. Um, it's always great. You'll be able to get all my videos uh, on drawings and watercolors and the Extreme Beginner series, of course, we're always going to stick with that and keep working on our practicing and working up our skills in drawing as well as in watercolor too, in painting. So we'll see you on the next video and happy painting everyone. Bye-bye and happy drawing.